to our first podcast. Hello. Hi. So who do we have here today? Let's go around and introduce ourselves. Hello, my name is Bryn Armstrong. I've been a member of the SLC family for about 13 years now. Um, this year I'm a virtual programmer. Ooh. Welcome to the podcast. Yay. Hi, I'm Cashel Moss. Uh, this is my second year at Sparrow. I'm supposed to be the head counselor uh, this year. Um, but this is my sixth summer working at summer camps. And I'm excited to be here. Rory, do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> I suppose so. My name's Rory. Hi, Rory. How long have you been at Sparrow Camp, Rory? About a, a year, one summer and a few weeks. <laughs> and ten you weeks total. are, what's your, like, your normal job at camp? What do people normally see you doing? I work at the beach. Cool. Very nice. Cool, cool. Short, sweet, just like Rory. <laughs> yeah. Not that short. <laughs> or that sweet. <laughs> okay, well, I'm Fiona, everyone. This is my fifth year at Spor- Sparrow. Sparrow. It's my fifth year at Sparrow. Um, and this year, my job is a virtual programmer with Bryn. Very exciting. And it's my third year on staff. So, yeah. Hi, babe. All right, so we're going to, we have this, this episode um, is all about camp memories. Um, so we're just going to talk and converse and share camp stories and have some fun. Yeah. Um, so do you guys want to share your first camp memory, like that was memorable, that stuck with you, or that has stuck with you the most? I mean, stuck with me the most in first camp memory are completely different things. Uh, for example, first camp memory. Um, I went to camp and we were sleeping in tents and we set up our tents and we were going to sleep that night and we set up our sleeping bags, sorry. Um, and we're going to sleep that night and the girl next to me said, do you want to see something cool? And so of course, obviously I'm going to say, duh. (laughs) Um, and she takes her, her legs out of her sleeping bag and she takes her socks off and she had wet toes. (laughs) She was like, I'm going to swim faster than you tomorrow. And I was like, okay, sure thing. Fine. So, I mean, you meet a lot of interesting people at camp. I feel um, like I'd, yeah, I feel like I'd be overwhelmed with that, being the first, like, person I First see. interaction. But, yeah. I mean, that's when I was 16 years old, and I'm 22 now, and I'm still here. So, sometimes the not-so-ordinary things make your time special. <laughs> um, but the mm, stuck-with-me-the-most camp memory... Uh, would probably have happened when I was a leadership camper. Um, We had to do a 16 hour solo sit, so it was really by myself. Uh, But it's when I started appreciating the nature of camp more, not just the uh, programming and the activity, but the location itself, the trees, the water, and just realizing that like, it's more involved in your life than you really think it is. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Thanks. Uh, My most camp memorable camp memory is probably but it's more of a thing I do at every camp. I always go to kind of somewhere alone, either like at the tip of the points here at Directors or at another camp in BC I went to. It's uh, on the ocean side of Vancouver Island. And I just you sit there and you look out. You just get to admire where you are. It's on the ocean side of Vancouver Island? The island. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thought it was funny because it's an <laughs> island, so it's but all an ocean a, side. An inland side. Yes, yes, I know. <laughs> I'm sensing a, a nature theme here, and I'm loving it. Camp Mine is, is surrounded by nature. Mine's like, my first memory at camp, I think for me, was just, when you know how when you first arrive at the cabin, and then after you, like, unpack all your bags, um, and, like, you get your bunk set up? So I guess, like, that mm-hmm. was not a first memory, but, like, the first one that like, kind of stuck was, like, the introduction in this, like, we sat in a circle in the middle of the cabin, and we all introduced ourselves. And I just remember, like, me sitting there staring at everyone in my, like, cabin. Because it was my first time at any overnight camp. Um, and I just remember, like, looking at all the girls being like, whoa, I'm about, I'm about to spend two weeks with these people. Like, this is going to be awesome. Like, I just remember being, like, so excited. 
and just like sitting there like not also we did two truths and one lie and I couldn't think of anything so I felt awkward but then like it was a whole part of I don't know I was just exciting even though I didn't know what I was doing yeah I always love first days I think my like my earliest memory was probably I was in Wee. And it was the first night and I, I couldn't sleep and I was like crying because I couldn't sleep with my counselor. Like, I don't remember how it happened, but I ended up on the porch with my counselor and just sitting there and like, I don't know, there were stars out. The camp, the camp is beautiful at nighttime mm. and just sitting there talking to my counselor. So that was my earliest memory, but like my most memorable was probably my first special day. I didn't know what special day was and we just wake up in the morning to these people walking down ca cabin row, dressed up as like medieval market people and like screaming about selling potatoes and like oh my God. they're basically acting as if it's a market and I had no idea what it was. I was like, there's a market outside my cabin. So that was probably my first special day. It was amazing. It was magical because I didn't know that it what it was existed. It, it was yeah. yeah. The blue. I, I feel like the first few special days like definitely like stick with people because it's just it's such like a different type of camp day that it's like just I don't know it's just crazy because it really is special especially when you're younger yeah even like coming to Sparrow as a staff member it special day is not anything that at least I've seen at the camps I've attended it's something where everyone fully commits and um the staff commitment really shows in the camper commitment because um well it just does I don't even know what yeah. I was gonna say because yeah, so anyways, I missed the sp first special like last year. I was away at a business trip. Um, but when I came back, all the campers in my cabin, they were like yelling at me because there's apparently there was this like medieval fight, like the crews versus the Weedins. They made appearance. Apparently we're on their native land. Yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, apparently the guy, there was this one really good king, uh, King Edward. Good king? He was kind of mean. No, he was, uh, as I gathered from my campers, he was literally the ideal form of human. And he just happened to look exactly like me. Okay, Rory. He did have that whole summer bod going, though. Mm. So, I mean... I heard he was, like, the perfect dad. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a fun day. I'm sorry you missed it. I know. I really regret it. I would have... I probably could have beat that King Edward in a fight. But... <laughs> maybe he'll come back another special day. Oh, maybe. I remember it was my LIT year, and the, the all of a sudden we had characters from Star Wars just run into the academy, and they were screaming and fighting, and they woke us up on our special day, and it scared me because it was like 7 a.m., and it was the one day that we were going to get to sleep in, and we didn't have to do time swim, and they woke us up in the middle of the common area. I, I was the kind of camper that we, at my camp, the, the LIT program was split up into levels. Um, so the level three LITs did time swim and bronze cross and whatnot. But I was always the kind of camper who was like, oh, you don't want to do your time swim? I'll do it with you. Even though I was like a level four LIT and I didn't have to. Mm -hmm. And so I'd wake up at 5 a.m. anyways and do the swim. But I don't know where I could find that motivation nowadays. It's just tiring mm -hmm. just do, doing camp life sometimes so much mm -hmm. because there's so much fun all day and you have to be so energetic all day. Um, I'm so glad I don't have to do time swim anymore. Yeah. And Rory, I'm so glad I don't have to watch the LITs do time swim. Yeah. It's cr kind of crazy to think though because like I'm at home now and me being here, I feel like it's so different, like, energy level-wise, the time I wake up and everything is so different than when I'm at camp. Like, even from, even if I wanted to wake up at 7 a.m. like I normally would, it's just, it's different. Like when it you're is. At home. Yeah, waking up at 7 a.m. here is, it's not that bad because you wake up and breakfast is made for you. You just go to the mm -hmm. dining hall. All you have to do is get yourself ready, and it's so much simpler than at home, and it really breaks your life down into an easy routine, I find. Like, mm -hmm. campers don't even notice when they're here. And it's well, I also find that camp is, <clears throat> like, it's a secluded area. Like, when I'm at camp, I feel like I'm in a completely different world. Like, I ignore that the outside world exists. So it definitely does feel different than home because it's its own little pocket of mm -hmm. home. Yeah. 
and even though like at camp like I like we do so much at camp and it's like so like dra- like it, it's kind of draining right like you're you spend the entire day outside and you're always doing physical activity but at the same time it's like good you never feel t- tired throughout the day it's just like you go through your entire schedule you wake up early you go to bed after a full day of energy and you just like I don't know it's such a different just schedule it's draining but I always want to be here Mm -hmm. like I've never found myself not wanting to be at camp through the winter I have a countdown constantly until I can go back to camp so it shows like there's so much you do in the day but it creates so much joy and happiness and bliss that it's just, if I wasn't doing it, I don't know where I would find myself. Yeah, and you it's, always sleep well. Well, yeah. Sorry, Shauna. <laughs> no, 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 that's true. It's, it's like a good drain of energy. It's like you, you, you make your day worth it, you know? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, do you guys have any, like, moments, like, learning camp moments where you, like, had a really positive or strong impact on you where you learned some life lessons? Like how can it kind of changed you? Um, I mean, I've been going to camp since I was six years old. So I think a lot of my values are deeply rooted in camp. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can see the difference in my siblings who never attended camp. Uh, and it's just basic, like, a basic, very, I don't know the word. Value. It's, it's like the, the baseline value you can have. Like, I value teamwork a whole lot because I grew up at a camp where we had to uh, bring our own dishes and wash our own dishes after every meal. And uh, it was always fun because you can like bet somebody um, anything during the day. Like I bet I can canoe back to the beach faster than you. And and it was always like, if I win, you have to do my dishes. Um, <laughs> which is like, you know, like not, not so much of teamwork, but in that competitive spirit also I find is another value of mine. I like competition. Mm-hmm. Um, but the teamwork value, I find when I, I always want to pull my work, my weight, I'm always looking for something else to do because camp has instilled this, um, sense of, uh, community, community, but also like, uh, initiative. Like I, I have to be doing something and I have to be finding out what I can do more. I find that it makes me want to help people a lot more just because of, being in my developmental stage through camp and my whole life it's Mm -hmm. it's really changed my values as who I am and I find myself constantly looking for more to do because I don't feel like I've done enough or maybe not I don't feel like I've done enough it's just I know that others might need help doing their own thing and that I'm because Mm -hmm. I'm done mine I can always help Mm -hmm. them more so it's definitely changed my values as a human yeah I, like, I agree. Um, I find, I don't have a specific defining moment, but, like, this moment shaped me. Mm-hmm. It's more like just being at camp, you, um, or subconsciously learn so much from just being mm-hmm. here, and you don't even realize it until, like, looking back, you see, oh, like, now because of camp, um, like, I have so much stronger friendships. I value, like, nature. Mm-hmm. I have a strong sense of community. I, I, I work well as a team. Like, all of these, like, camp teaches you so much without you even realizing it. Yeah, like, I don't want to be cliche by saying, oh, camp has made me the person I am today, but it's so true. It's too late, you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's like, I didn't want to be cliche and say it, but it's true, because, like, without camp, I don't think I'd be this outgoing, like, even mm-hmm. me deciding that I want to be a teacher when I'm older, honestly, I believe, has stemmed from me being at camp, going through the LIT program, CIT program, being a counselor, doing all of these things, and now being a programmer, like, all of these little things have like helped changed me and helped like kind of path what I want to do it's crazy like I hate that I like it's so cliche to say that it's changed me and it's like helped shape me but it's so true well cliches are cliche for a reason so I mean it's definitely changed a lot of people and it's it's proven in many uh, many scholarly articles as well um if for the people who don't know I have a degree in outdoor adventure leadership and so I did learn through all that that there are many studies on kids going to camp have these stronger sense of community and the stronger sense of value and the stronger sense of teamwork and it's very much proven through academia Mm -hmm. and you also go through experiences that you really wouldn't be able to get anywhere else but a place like camp you know and i think 
And I think that's like the whole point of it too, is that you're able to do things that you wouldn't be able to do at home. And then it's through these experiences that you like learn different things. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything that you learned? Not anything different, just to confirm that. Like I didn't even spend as much time in like at SLC as Brian and Kiana have or at other regular summer camps. I went through the whole cadet program as a kid, but it, it taught the same values of like, it's not just you. There's this whole group. There's more to the world than just me doing whatever I want because that's what I want. You also learn the importance of water and not wasting water. I remember water. that not from last summer. <laughs> you want to tell that story? Or? I don't know. Oh, yes, I remember that. So at my cadet camp, I used to work at kind of the uh, programming staff. Kind of, so that's what its equivalent is. Uh, and there was in the middle of the field, in the middle of camp, there was no water pump. So we, I would have to get this cart, and I'd have full of like those giant Gatorade jugs you see at football games, and I'd fill them up with water and ice, and I had to carry like five or six of them at a time on this little cart, just stacked up high, and I put like one on a backpack on my back, and I'd have to hike about a kilometer uphill with the water to get water to these kids who don't die of dehydration. And I would always see kids pouring water out because it had gotten warm. And it was just, <laughs> I had hiked an entire kilometer uphill with all this water, only for them to dump it on the ground because they didn't like it. Must have been frustrating. Yes. So don't waste water. Lesson yeah. learned. Is that a deep core value of yours? Is to not waste H two O. It's not a core value. It's just core memory. Core memory. <laughs> Do you have any um, embarrassing moments at camp? Like, um, I know often, like, things that happen at camp, it might no, seem I'm embarrassing perfect. in the moment. But, like, because camp's a welcoming environment, looking back, mm -hmm. um, you realize that really, like, it wasn't that big of a deal. It, and everyone, like, welcomed you, and even though this happened to you. I used to hate singing songs and doing skits. Mm -hmm. I hated going up there in front of all these people. Um, and this was mainly as a camper when we did camper skits. And when I became LIT, uh, it was more of an excitement because I wanted this to be my future career, my future job. So I was just so hyped. And then as soon as I got in front of those people, it was like instant embarrassment just set in again. Um, and it's really like, it's not embarrassing to do a skit at camp at all. It's not embarrassing to do a song because mm -hmm. no matter what, at least the counselors are going to applaud mm -hmm. because yeah they will just be thankful that you are up there for them. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think it's probably the best place to try out performance mm -hmm. um, and in public speaking, especially. Um, so I lost that embarrassment through the years by a, like through every campfire, I have to sing a song or I have to mm -hmm. do a skit. I don't have to, I, I choose to. Yeah. I choose to myself so I could get over that. Um, and you learn more about yourself and how you talk to people and what your pauses are and your crutches are. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's not so much an embarrassing story, I guess, but just like how I learned to overcome embarrassment mm -hmm. through camp. Yeah, I relate to that. Like, I am, I can't sing. Mm -hmm. And so going up on stage, um, like anywhere outside of camp, I don't, I, I don't enjoy performing. I, I don't sing in front of people outside of camp unless yeah. it's just like, you know, I'm singing to the radio or something. Mm -hmm. But ca because camp is a welcoming, welcoming environment, I love going out at campfires and singing songs and doing skit because, mm -hmm. like, so what if I can't sing? Mm -hmm. It's fun. <laughs> I agree with you. I actually have a story, kind of, <laughs> of, like, a really embarrassing moment for me, or at least at the time I thought was embarrassing, but now I'm over it. Um, I know, Brynn, I've mentioned this one to you before, but mm -hmm. it was my first year, and it was, like, one of the first campfires, and I was a cabin one girl, so still, obviously, very worried about how I looked and all of these things, and, like, I think I started camp kind of later in comparison to, like, most campers, like, Brynn, you started as a peewee, but I started as, like, a 13-year-old girl, you know, so mine, it was one of the first campfires, and I volunteered while well, my entire cabin told me I should. Um, mm -hmm. It was for like a commercial skit. And I, at this mm -hmm. time, I didn't know what it was at all. So the person leading it, his name is Owen, he pulled me back into the corner at the point, at director's point, And he said, okay, so you're going to be auditioning for a commercial. 
and you are going to be acting like you are riding a bull. And I was like, okay, perfect. I was just in Florida, fully went on a bull riding machine. I've got this down. I was ready for it. So we get back to the stage and they sat me on the corner or like in the middle of the stage and everyone's staring at me. And I was so nervous because it was my first time at camp and first time volunteering for anything. And they told me one, two, three action. And there I was sitting on the end of the stage thinking that I was uh, auditioning for a commercial and that I was riding a bull. And they like were telling me to go really get into it, like go back and forth, do all these things. And I remember sitting there like not really enjoying what I was doing, but also like laughing because it was funny. And then at the end, it turns out I was auditioning for a poop commercial. So the entire audience thought that that was me showing how I poop. And it, in my head, it was me riding a bull. So <laughs> like, I remember being really embarrassed for that one. But now looking back at it, I'm just so happy that I did it because it was like, I'm so over ever feeling embarrassed at camp because like, I don't know, it was fun. Everyone loved it. It was funny. I don't know. I liked it. So even though at the time I was embarrassed, I think it was a good, it was a good moment to like kind of break out of my shell. Uh, I personally don't think I've had any like one specific moment that I was super embarrassed about, but like just several times, like at a, uh, if you go to like a campfire and they do like the lawnmower one where like you get selected for the end and like, you know, that like the final joke is going to be like, and like, you just need like one big jerk to pull the lawnmower to get it running and like you know you're going to be like the butt of this joke but you go to do it anyways or uh dancing and the dances I don't I don't dance me neither <laughs> but like those those kids like they just drag you in there and they just want you to dance with them so you just do it anyways like and it's the more dance I've done more dancing in the last 12 seconds than I have in the last 12 years <laughs> um an embarrassing story that I kind of just remembered it was my first year on staff I was so excited to do everything, so ready to be a camp counselor. I've done all these years of leadership development. Like, I am set. Um, and you know, like, camps often have beach parties or like some kind of barbecue at the end. Mm -hmm. And so this was, I think, our first camp beach party of the summer. Uh, we were all down at the beach having burgers and fries and we're all letting some kids swim, having water fights, having a fire. Like, it was a great time and I was just, loving it like trying to find different camper groups to sit with trying to find that one camper who might not be with a group and like bring them into a group doing all this stuff um and so i see a camper on uh one of the benches just sitting by herself making a bracelet bracelets are classic camp activity i've got this i can do it um so i sit down next to her because i'm ready to show her some new bracelet activities and then invite more campers over to do bracelet activities and then suddenly we have a, fr a group of friends um, and no one's alone anymore. So I'm so confidently, I plop myself down on the bench and instantly I'm in pain. Oh no. Turns out this camper had some scissors in her backpack <gasps> and I sat a bit too close to her backpack uh, and got scissors in, um, scissors in my bum cheek. Oh no. Um, <laughs> and so I had to like get up and this camper like just saw me sat down. So she was like, leaving already and I had to be like oh I guess I can stay for a while and I'm like sitting there trying to do bracelets with her stabbed. and I'm just like like what does Olaf say in Frozen oh I've been impaled <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting here like that the whole time um and then finally I had to like get up and walk over to my camp director and I'm 16 years old at this time and she's probably like 24 so to me she was this really adulty person um and I had to walk over to her and be like hi can you do first aid on my bum <laughs> and <laughs> it was really awkward and really embarrassing for me and I had to go to the um the outhouse that we have and do first aid and I was fine it was just a little cut um but it definitely brought me closer to my director and closer to the staff I worked with mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know, it's the embarrassing things that do happen at camp, I find just bring you closer to everyone else or become a funny story later mm -hmm. on in life. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think like a lot of these embarrassing or embarrassing stories, like put us outside of our comfort zone mm -hmm. and it, but it's in a safe environment. So we're able to like learn and grow from it, which I think is a great 
part of camp and a great value of camp. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for sharing. All right, let's see. We might have one more question, and then I think I think we talked for long enough. Mm -hmm. um, do you have? Is there a person that you remember who has like impacted you or helped you at camp that um, like you remember? Like, is there a, 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 can you do you have a better way to phrase that question, Kiana? Um. I think just someone who's, like, why they kind of stood out to you. I think, like, I can start it off mm -hmm. kind of and give a kind of example. So, for me, it was definitely um, my LIT coordinators. Like, I'd say the both of them. So, Who LIT. your LIT coordinators, Kiana? It was Alex Ipiam and Rebecca Rochev. Oh, okay. I see their names around camp a lot now. Yeah, Rebecca had been there forever, and Alex, it was his first year um, as the LIT coordinator, and then he did me, he did, like, my CIT year, and then he also was my, like, he was your job, Cashel, so he was, like, the camp, uh, or the counselor coordinator, so he actually followed through with me for all three years, and I'd say, like, he probably had the biggest impact on me, or kind of, like, stood out to me the most. Alex, he just, um, like, I think when you're going through, like, this kind of, like, puberty stage, grade, like, 10, 11, 12, it's definitely, like, a time where you're changing, and, like, you're going through difficulties with friends, and you're just dealing with, like, boys, and just friendship problems, and you're just figuring yourself out, and um, I think especially in LIT, like, you're really learning, you're learning all these different life skills, um, and I think he just did a really good job of, like, supporting me throughout that, and then it kind of turned around and helped me when I was on staff, because I was, like, I want to be, like, Alex and Rebecca, like, I want to be, an, I want to make an impact, um, like, they made an impact on me, and just, like, strive to be as good of a staff member as they were, or as, like, I thought they were to me as a camper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely can relate to that. The counselors are probably... Well, they're the number one person that you interact with, the number one staff that you interact with, and you're just so drawn to them that it's hard not to learn from them. Mm -hmm. um, especially, like, we all know the counselors who just draw campers to them. They have that aura around them. They're fully um, in on their games. And actually, Bryn, last year, like, you are one of those counselors. Oh, you are you. fully committed to the games. You are fully committed to the performances. To every part of camp, you just kind of draw the campers towards you. Um, and those counselors growing up, I found always were the ones who I was most drawn to and I could relate to, like, uh, my camp used camp names. Um, so there was a counselor, Bigfoot and Kicks. Um, and my first summer, they were my counselors and I was coming back from the washroom to my tent and it was a torrential downpour. So I couldn't go, I couldn't even see my tent. And so they let me hang out in their tent for a while and they taught me some bracelet making. They taught me how to loom and um make like finger knitting with yarn and I remember making like a finger knitting project that was probably 10 meters long like it was insane I'd wrap it around myself to to wear and stuff but I just wanted to be like them so much I knew that they could do it I knew they played guitar and they played for they played songs for me until the rain was over because I was the only camper in their tent at the time and um and I just remember like I got a guitar that summer too and I just really wanted to learn to play it and I just wanted to be like them and they just have such a huge role model impact mm -hmm. on the campers lives yeah I yeah I've said I, I have to say I have a similar experience I I can't say that I have any one specific person who has impacted me but definitely like all like counselors and staff <laughs> staff <laughs> like sorry I definitely like are these real staff yeah so I, I like their counselors and staff and resource members that I've seen and had as when I was a camper I definitely they definitely like influenced me and I I strive to be I don't say like them but I pull different parts of their personality personalities yeah. and to ma make my camp persona mm -hmm. and even like my peers like you know Ava mm -hmm. I love her so much. I want to be, like, I, I strive to embody her, her vibes. <laughs> yeah, there's a saying, actually, that 
camp counselors are the greatest thieves. Mm -hmm. We just constantly steal from other people their personality traits and their activities, their games, other camps in their special days even. We just constantly are taking these and learning off of them. Mm -hmm. And when people come into camp, there's always someone who's going to be more qualified than you. Well, I think but to not see that person as a threat and mm -hmm. immediately see them as a resource is I think something that camp has definitely changed my mindset in. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I completely agree with you. Like, I think it's the whole thing of like, you the whole point is that you want to make sure that it's a good and fun experience for the campers right so if that means like oh I love this about Bryn I want to try and like put that into my own personality and make sure I can embody it so that the way like the campers feel the same about like I, I don't know how to explain it but like I think it's a good thing it's you shouldn't feel like ever guilty mm -hmm. about like taking something or like a trait I think it's like a no I want to I want to use everyone else's positives and like try and make that a positive about myself you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're here to lift each other up and yeah we do that by sharing each other's strengths yeah and sharing your own talent mm -hmm. especially yeah. I think that's important is that even though you're taking the or you're influencing your personality based on others the only way other people are learning is by showing their own talents as well. So you shouldn't be afraid to show your own and just mm -hmm. take other personality yeah. as well. And even though like we're all sharing stories about like how everyone influenced us and how we want to embody other people, that doesn't mean that camp isn't a place to fully be yourself. Like oh, yeah. we're all totally ourselves, but we're striving to not be better. I don't know how to word this, but like, then yeah, like we don't form into just one consciousness. <laughs> <Exactly. Yeah. laughs> Like, one staff personality <laughs> we're all our unique selves but we're growing together mm -hmm. no exactly it's all about like i don't know growing and just being positive positive. and that's what i think is really different this summer with the virtual camps is as fun as it is and as camp programming as it is that it's hard to get mm -hmm. those in-between moments that happen in programming because although camp is a long draining day full of fun and full of programming um it's not just it it's really those in between lull moments where you learn the most about a camper and you learn their talents their skills their personality and honestly when i'm playing quidditch or when we're doing wow it's not usually when i learn something about the yeah. campers and probably the hardest time for me to remember names even because i have so much going on in my head but when we sit down to have an apple at the basketball courts or we're lining up for stuff that's when i actually get to talk to the campers about mm -hmm. their lives and what they're excited about. Yeah, I think my favorite camp memories as a staff and even as a camper are those like little moments like in the cabin or mm -hmm. a rest hour or when you're just, you know, the chill, the quiet time when you get to really like learn who campers are and mm -hmm. create those bonds between campers. And I think the other mm -hmm. thing too is that like even as a staff member, you're still always learning. Like, yeah. even the never can tell us, like, Bryn, you know so many of them, and I remember when we were co's, like, we were doing some in the cabin for the campers, and I'm sitting there not knowing any of them and not being able to figure it out, but it was, like, just so entertaining, and it's, like, you're still learning things all the time, so mm -hmm. even, like, even those little things, I don't know, they're, you want to hold on to those memories as well. I've forgotten a lot of them, it, it'll take my brain a little to... That's what I, I think remember. is nice about them, though, is because it's not a memory that you can keep replaying and get tired of in mm -hmm. your head. They just pop up when something reminds you of it, yeah. you know, and which is why it's probably hard to bring up in a podcast because it's not something that I've rehearsed in my mind. It's just these little moments of joy that I remember as a kid and the, all, it's just like a flash of memory yeah. that you can't really get anywhere else besides camp. Yes. Thank you everyone for joining us on this first episode of our podcast. Be sure to tune in next time. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed. See you later. Alligator.